everyone. Thank you for joining us again. I really appreciate the fact that every Tuesday, a loyal supporter of the sewing workshop. Really appreciate it. It's been a really busy season for us. It's Thanksgiving last weekend, or last week, I guess. My daughter was in town. You got to see her last Tuesday. I got a lot of nice comments from you about how much you enjoyed seeing her, and it was great fun. We had a wonderful time. So it's onward. Part of what we're doing right now is a lot of planning for our So Confident program for 2021. So Confident is a major deal for us. We've been doing it now for nine years. This will be our 10th issue, 10th season, 10th series. And it's, we put a lot of effort into what we produce as So Confident. It's, for 2021, we're making some changes. Every year we make changes. But uh, before I get into that, let me talk about what we just put out yesterday as issue 11 of So Confident 2020. So the coat behind me is the latest variation of the Crossroads shirt. And the Crossroads shirt is the fourth of the digital patterns that you got with the 2020 program. And this is an incredible coat made out of an assortment of wool fabrics. Uh, even the boucles that I talked about, I believe it was a couple of weeks ago maybe, the viscose and wool boucles a little heavier wool, which we still have some of. And then this is a textured black wool. But look at this lining in the beautiful fuchsia pink. And because the top of the coat is white, we lined this in white as well so that the pink wouldn't show through and turn this into a sort of off pinkish white color, blue sleeves. And we squared off the collar. The collar normally is tapered on one side and squared off on the other and we left off the cuff. So all of those pattern alterations, the lengthening, the collar, what else? I guess that, and the lining is all in the issue that you can print out. Every month's issue can be printed out either as a spiral bound magazine or as a more booklet form um, magazine. So I just wanted to show you what you all who are members of 2000 20 so confident have in your account as of yesterday and of course we sell our so confident programs of all years all the time so you could even reach back and order series one which is 2012 of so confident or anything in between but we are in the planning stages in fact we've really i think settled in on what we're doing for 2021 we've been so busy thanks to you all for months now that we're a little bit strained on, on deciding what we were going to do for 2021. I just had to get my head around things because things are so different, as you know. So we'll be announcing all of the details next Tuesday on Facebook Live of what 2021 is going to look like. But it's going to be very exciting. It's everything from monthly videos to Zoom question and answer sessions to special discounts to a quarterly magazine of Make This With That. So. You'll, you'll get the full, full blown deal next Tuesday. And it'll be on the website at that point as well. I always like to show what we just got in and a couple of days ago, well, not a couple of days ago, that would have been Sunday, that wouldn't have worked. Uh, last week at some point, we got some fabulous new textured wools in. Now you've seen this sort of wool from us before, but these are new patterns for us and they're very exciting. So check out this animal print background with these raised red and black flowers. And the selvage is fantastic. This is the kind of selvage that you want to cut off and put back on in strategic places or cut out your garment so that certain edges have these beautiful selvages. So that's the black and red one. And this one is the one, I love this one. This is so colorful. This is the one that Aaron fell in love with. Beautiful background of purple and sort of a, a light orange with these green and blue flowers. Again, the fantastic selvage. 
We've got limited yardage of these, so if you're interested, it's probably a good idea to jump on it. As a matter of fact, this one, we only got seven yards of this, which is really not that many yards. So it's probably only a couple of orders of this. But gray background with the magenta and purple and dark gray flowers, and again, the great selvage. If I were to think about using these wools, and they are a knit, by the way, they're just kind of a gutsy sweater knit, I would be thinking about making a chateau coat. So simple, it doesn't break up the pattern of the fabric, so you'd really get a sense of the overall motif. And these are the kinds of edges that you could use for the selvage. You could cut off the selvage and reapply it to the edges, or you could cut it out in such a way that the selvages are just part of the built-in uh, cutting out of the garment. But you can see it's a very simple garment, very easy to wear, super simple to make. Put patch pockets on it. All of this is in the pattern. Even this uh, detail about how to bind the edges in the knit, where it's narrow on one side and wider on the other side. It's a really signature technique that I learned from Jean Casasado uh, out in California, Berkeley, California. It's her signature technique. So, chateau coat. All right. So that's what's new. But today, we're going to talk about this time of year and what you could make for yourself or for somebody else as well. I've been on the hunt for the perfect bag for 72 years now. And I think I have found six of them. So we have a collection of six bag patterns in the Sewing Workshops collection. And I decided to pull them all together for you and show them to you all at once. My idea of the perfect bag to make is that you don't want to have to chase down all of the components that go into making a bag. You know you can go to the box stores and find hooks and rings and webbings and they never match either width, color, finish or whatever. So I like to design bags that don't have a lot of hardware and where the fabric is, is part of the whole build of the bag. So the first three that I'm going to show you out of the six bag patterns that we have are three that we've put together kits. So I'm going to show you the bag made up like the kit would be. So we've put together these fantastic kits that have every single thing you need to make the bag, except the sewing machine. You need a sewing machine. You don't even need a serger. But it has the webbing, the zippers, the thread, the lining, whatever the pattern requires you're going to get it in that kit. And they're going to be discounted, which we're going to talk about. They'll be on sale at the end of this. So let's start with the boulder bag. This is the boulder bag. It's uh, not the newest. It's the second newest of the bag collection. But uh, when I travel, I haven't traveled much lately, that's for sure. But in my travel days, this was my carry-on. So now it's my gym bag. It's my tennis bag, and there's something about this that's just perfect. It has just the right length of strap for your shoulder, but it also has these two additional short straps so that you can pick up the bag quickly and carry it like this. So it really has two sets of handles and two different widths of webbing. This, the webbing on these ends is one inch wide, and this webbing is an inch and a half. Now notice this really cool zipper that's exposed. It's sewn in such a way that you see a little bit of the tape. And it has a wonderful pull, sturdy pull. It's a coil zipper, so it's lightweight, not super heavy. I don't like a bag that's really heavy to start out with. I like a bag that's fairly lightweight so that I can load it. And then, of course, it has this wonderful pink lining. And I do like a zipper interior or excuse me, a zipper pocket on the interior. So this has a zipper on the interior. I've actually seen people make this with a separate panel on the outside so that it can slip through the handles of your carry-on rolly bag, which I thought was a brilliant idea. Now, I will say that I 
wanted to make the boulder bag just a little bit smaller than the pattern. The pattern normally makes a bag that's about 25 inches or 24 inches finished. And this bag is 20 inches. There's, I may be wrong about this. I think it's 16 inches finished or 18 inches finished. You know what? It doesn't really matter. This is four inches smaller <laughs> than the pattern. Although when you order this kit, with all this fabric and the lining and the bottom and the webbings and the zipper and everything, the instructions are included and they are included for making this size bag. If you order the pattern separately, you're going to have instructions to make a bag that's four inches bigger. It's easy to cut down, doesn't really, you know, any way, make it smaller, less deep, whatever. One of the things I like about this bag is that the bottom of it is using a material called fusible Peltex by Pellon. It's fusible on one side and so this is the bottom of this bag. It's flexible and I like the fact that it will bend and recover. Now sometimes I will put a little extra piece of foam on the bottom just to add a little softness and if I do that then I might use something like headliner fabric which you can get at Hobby Lobby uh, a place like that, or you can order something called Soft and Stable by Annie's. I like that as well, but it's a foamy, soft piece that I sew to this piece. This is a 9 inch by whatever the width is of your bag, and I'll sew these two together if I choose to want something a little bit softer on the bottom. I don't always do that, it's just an option. When I install this zipper, of course, I am using my zipper foot, and I've talked about this before, but I do use the generic zipper foot that has the movable foot. In, in the Bernina world, you buy a shank, a separate little shank, and then you can buy a generic zipper. In this case, this is by Baby Lock. I think you can also get them from Brother, and it will attach to the shank so that I can move this foot and get it really out of the way and expose whatever I want to expose, in this case, the teeth. So think about that. Get the right zipper. I use polyester thread when I'm making my bags. It's a little bit stronger. And when I'm sewing garments, I'm using a fairly lightweight needle, maybe a 65 or a 70, 75 at the most in my sewing machine. But I beef that up when I'm making bags because I'm going through lots of thicknesses. For instance, right here, I've got four, five, six thicknesses of fairly heavy fabric plus the webbing. And so I want to use maybe an 80 or a 90 size needle. Universal needles are just fine for most of these bags, but um, you want to be careful and not break your needles. I love this fabric. I'm, I'm just crazy about this fabric. It reminds me of a vintage cruel pattern, hand sewn. This is a printed pattern, but it's very vintage looking and it sort of reminds me kind of of a carpet bag or something like that. So this is the first kit that we're offering for the boulder bag. All right, the second one is the Provence Market Bag, and that's this one. Samantha made this, and I think it is fantastic. She and I collaborated on the fabric a little bit, and this fabric is a linen jacquard. So it actually is two colors. This is the brighter of the two colors. The other side is a little less bright. But it reminds me of what we do sometimes at Chateau du Mas in France. One of the activities that we have an option of doing at Chateau du Mas is to do woad dyeing in the fairy fields, as we call it there. Uh, it's a beautiful setting outside of Chateau du Mas, and a, a woman comes and sets up her vats of dye, and we can dye anything we want to in her special woad mixtures. Woad, of course, is sort of like indigo in the sense that it's a blue color. And woad is the color that you see for all of the trims in paint and fabric and accessories in France. You can drive by uh, most old villages, through most villages, and see the blue shutters and their painted woad color. And you get a lot of different blues, but I love 
whatever blue comes out of the woad that dies. And this reminded me of that. It, this is a very French looking fabric. So we used a more solid woven blue for the insert. You see how this bag has dimension. So you have this insertion that creates more fullness to the bag. And Samantha, on her own, came up with this cat motif that she fused to this background, cut out some of the flowers from the fabric and fused those on, machine stitched around these, machine stitched this, but then took some embroidery floss and sewed little hairs on the cat, some eyes, and then outline stitched this with a stem stitch. Actually, I think it's a chain stitch. So this is hand embroidered first, the, the hair, then it's applied, and then it's been uh, outlined in the lighter stitching. We have fabulous webbings. We have a lot of different webbings on our website. You're going to be amazed when you look at that. These are from Japan. And so this is something that you just sew. You don't have to, to uh, worry about uh, making your handles in this case. So when you order this kit, you get the, fa the two fabrics. You get the cat motif to cut out. You get the heat and bond to fuse it on. You get the embroidery floss, and you get a needle to sew it on, and you get thread, and you get the webbings, and you are ready to go to make this bag. This is a large bag, which is, of course, what I love about it. But I have reduced this pattern by, 75, by 25 percent and made it 75 percent as large. And I like that size as well. So either way, it's a wonderful, wonderful tote bag for your projects, again, for your exercise clothes or whatever you feel like putting in this, but it's a great bag for knitting and handwork, and I carry it to and from the office with who knows what. So, Provence Market Bag. This is our village bag, and Samantha also made this one. I have to show you what she made first out of this particular suede laser cut fabric. Samantha made this coat, which is the now coat, the now shirt, lengthened. And instead of the collar being folded down so that it's doubled, she left it single layer. All the seams are on the outside so that you see the knit, which is the backing, coming through. So the fabric, the suede fabric actually has holes in it, laser cut. And then whatever you put behind it, it obviously is going to show through and create this fantastic texture. So I don't think Samantha's going to get this coat back. She sent it to me last week to show you all. But the way it fits and um, feels on me, I think I own it now. Thank you very much, Samantha. Merry Christmas. Yeah, beautiful. But she used the same fabric, this time backing it with some golden wheat-colored linen. So it has a totally different look to it. And using ultra suede straps. We have these fantastic zippers on the inside that have kind of an animal print to them, beautiful decorative zippers. And the bag is closed with magnets that are concealed in a little pocket. This also has some interesting corner detail to it which is super easy to make. So this is one pattern piece. There's no bottom seam to this, just side seams and then a little trick to doing the corners. The ultra suede that we use is the heavier weight ultra suede for upholstery. In the old days when I was an interior designer, I used to every once in a while upholster a piece of furniture in ultra suede. And it's just a little denser, a little heavier, and it makes great straps. So what you get in this kit is the laser cut suede, the linen, the two zippers, and the two pre-cut handles, and the magnets and thread, the whole thing in a kit. But we are also selling just the pre-cut handles in either the wheat color or a more avocado color. So these can be purchased as well. When I sew the ultra suede together, I'm gonna to use polyester thread, I'm going to put them wrong sides together.
and I'm going to use sewing and craft tape to adhere the, it together so that when I sew it, it's not going to crawl and creep and, and move on me. So the sewing and craft tape is like, it's like a masking tape, sort of, only it has a covering. You put it down, remove the covering, and it holds things together. So it's not something that you use an iron with. You put it down, remove the paper covering, and it sticks. And it can stay in there, or you can take it off, but I just leave it in there. It's no big deal. But when I sew it, I'm going to sew a distance from the edge, let's say a quarter of an inch. Because it's, I, I ultimately want to have it appear as if I've sewn an eighth of an inch from the edge. But it's too hard to sew an eighth of an inch from an edge, any edge. And so I sew a quarter of an inch, and then I take my rotary cutter and my ruler, and I'll trim off an eighth of an inch. And now I get a nice clean slice, and it looks like I sewed perfectly an eighth of an inch from the edge. I like Ultra Suede because it's durable and you can wash it. So you could clean these if they tend to get dirty over time and by just soap and water and they, it dries perfectly and it doesn't change the character or the color of the Ultra Suede. So this is the Village Bag. I used to have a bag and I can't find it a village bag made out of this laminated linen. This is a vinyl coated piece of linen. And I used the same straps and I didn't line it. You don't have to line this bag. I don't think. Never mind, forget I just said that. You have to line this. <laughs> It's been a while since I've made one, I guess. At any rate, these handles work really great uh, because you're right. You do have to line this bag uh, in a fabric, or you could probably line it in the same thing, actually. Uh, but this particular handle looks really great on here. Now that I look at this, though, I kind of like the arrangement on it, too. So either one. But this is very inexpensive fabric. It's on our website uh, on sale for $10 a yard but uh, with your 20% that you're going to get off on this, it'll be $8 a yard. You can make a very inexpensive bag. And what I like about this fabric is over time it kind of crumples and crinkles and breaks down and, and gets soft and it's really nice. So. All right, should I take the coat off or just leave it on? I really like it. It feels great. It's getting cold out, so it's, it's that time of year. All right, so those are the three kits. We have the Boulder Bag Kit, the Provence Market Kit, and the Village Bag Kit, all in this project bag, ready to go. We've got them made up. We're ready to ship. We're in good shape. All right. Now, we have three other bag patterns, and I have some fabric suggestions for those. The first one is the L squared. Now, if you want to know why this is named L squared, it's because I love this bag and that used to be my nickname, Linda Lee L squared, get it? You know, used to be kind of cute. Anyway, this is made out of a piece of upholstery. Uh, I love this bag because it has the outside corners exposed like this. Normally this is a detail that you sew on the inside of a bag, but this is on the outside. It has these inserted gussets on the side that are just sewn in so you t see the top stitching of that gusset. Again, ultra suede for the handles. And this time, I've just sewn a little bit of a reinforcement. Just It's a detail because this handle is folded in half. And then another little detail of ultra suede is sewn on top. This also has the magnets in little tabs. These magnets are so strong, it's just sort of amazing. And again, we have pockets on the inside of this bag as well. So this is um, a little different shaped bag. It does fit over your shoulder in sort of a different way, but I like something that is pretty secure under your shoulder or under your arm, so you don't feel like you're gonna lose the bag. Now, this was just a remnant of an upholstery fabric, and many of you might have great remnants on hand. But this is a fabric that I think 
would look really great in that bag. Talk about a carpet bag. This would look like a carpet bag in this wool and acrylic, I think it is. Let's see what it is for sure. Poly. Yeah. Um, wonderful. What's the name of the, the, the Pendleton? That's the word I'm looking for. It has a very, it's not Pendleton, but it looks like a Pendleton and it would hold up really well. And again, with the beautiful straps on it, line it in black, line it in something neutral, line it in something fun. But I think this would make a great bag. This would make any of the bags, actually, now that I look at it. It would make a great village. It would make a great boulder. It doesn't have to be the L squared. All right, then we have the Daily News bag. Now, Daily News, I na we named it this because it just felt like that kind of bag that the newsboy would carry the papers in as he or she through the papers. But you can see that the, it's, it's, the handles are put in such a way that the bag uh, folds and drapes in an interesting way. The bottom of the bag is actually like a box. It's like a bento box. It does have this crisscross seam in the bottom, has a little bit of dimension, about an inch and a half of dimension, and then there's this tube of fabric that's sewn to the top of the box. And there are two seams to it. Now this bag is not lined necessarily, and the pocket here is a floating pocket. So you still have the zipper, and you have a two-piece pocket that is sewn so that you see the stitching, or sometimes see the stitching on the outside. Now this is a coated fabric. And it depends on where you're stitching and what you're doing to it, but sometimes you might need a presser foot that has a Teflon finish on the bottom. I couldn't find mine this morning to show to you, but just know that I think most brands of sewing machines have those kinds of presser feet. And they do come in handy for fabrics that might be a little bit sticky on the outside. The top of this bag has been finished with our fold over elastic. We have this on our website. It's elastic that's about an inch wide, but it does have a little bit of an indentation to the center of it. You just put it over the edge, and then this has been zigzagged across here. It really makes a great edging for a lot of things, and bags in particular. This is one of the webbings that we have on our website. And we ordered these special pieces of hardware just for the boulder, uh, the daily news bag. We have the buckles the slide buckles, and we have the rings. And we have these in a couple of finishes, the polished chrome and antique brass. We also have those in larger sizes so that you could have a larger, wider strap if you want to or make your tabs bigger. But we have them, again, in the same finishes, the polished chrome or antique brass. This is the kind of hardware that's really hard to find. This is daily news. And the other pattern that we have is called the downtown bag. Now the downtown bag has two zippers on the outside, two outside pockets. Again, we like these exposed zippers, a great lining and a zipper pocket on the inside as well. Combination of ultra suede for the short handle. So when you hold it by the short handle, it looks a little bit like a backpack. And in fact, Deb yesterday was talking about making one of these for her daughter for Christmas and actually using it as a backpack pattern and putting the backpack straps on it. So you can carry it with the short handle or you can carry it with the longer handle over your shoulder. 
So the fabric that I chose for this is this. Whoops. <laughs> this is um, a cotton matelassé fabric in this wonderful mist blue gray fabric. Has a bit of texture to it, but it just has the right feel for a bag, a lightweight bag to me. And I I made a jacket out of the green version of this, so it can be, certainly be used for garments as well. But just looking at it, it just struck me as a really great fabric for a bag as well. Then I want to show you something I forgot to show you, what I wanted to show you for the daily news bag. This is really, really fun. And we, as you can see, we don't have much left. But this is a faux vinyl over a velour knit. So you get this two-tone of, of texture and shine and matte and this laser cut vinyl already sewn to the velour. That would make a fantastic bag. So again, another coated fabric. You're going to want to test your seams, find the right needle, right presser foot. But none of these fabrics are particularly difficult to sew, including this faux suede here, the laser cut suede. Super easy to sew. I don't think you're going to have any trouble with that. All right. One of the things I wanted, another bottom option I wanted to talk about is in the bottom of this bag, the L squared bag, Rather than using the Peltex, I actually used plastic canvas. And as I recall, this is a number 12. You can get this in various sizes and various weights. One of the things I like about this one is that it does have really great recovery. So it will bend, but it's not going to bend and crease. And the other thing I like about it is after I cut it and placed it on the bottom of this, then I was able to gauge my stitch length and I could stitch in each of these holes along the bottom of this seam. So it really holds that in place. I'm going to see if I did this in this bag. I don't remember. Sometimes I will put, I didn't, but sometimes I will make a separate bottom insert. I'll take a piece of this plastic canvas and I'll cover it in something like ultra suede or some sort of a fabric that's a little bit washable. And I'll make this the size of the bottom of a bag. And I'll, I can just put it in there and take it in and out. So that as my bag is used and it gets a little bit dirty, then I can take the bottom out, wash it, refresh it, clean it off. I like that idea as well. Okay, I'm going to take the coat off only because I'm getting warm. I'll give it to you. All right. So some of the things that you might want to have on hand in bag making. I find that sometimes my pins don't want to go through all of the layers. So I like to use the Wonder Clips. That's a great little tool, especially when I was sewing on the boulder bag and I was sewing the webbing and trying to pin through all of these layers. I found that the clips really held things in place for me and I didn't have to worry about things shifting. So wonder clips are handy. I talk about fusy web all the time. I can't, I can't tell you how much fusy web I go through because I use it so often. But when I am having trouble keeping things in place and the pins aren't working for me, I can fuse this down, remove the paper covering, and temporarily glue something in place. Comes in really handy. So this is a product where you can use an iron to press it down. The sewing and craft tape is a similar function, but I don't use an iron on this. So I'm using this on fabrics that I don't want to press or the iron might damage the fabric. And I use the fusy web when I can get an iron to it. That's the same idea, keeping things together before you sew them.
All right. We've got lots of things on our website. When you go to our website now and you look at the products that are going to be featured this week, you're going to see an amazing array of things. We have lots and lots of different webbings, all of which have come from Japan. We really, really like them. Uh, some are prepackaged like this, 2.4 meters. Others you buy by the yard, various widths, various colors. So check out all the webbings. We do sell the ultra suede separately in quarter yard hunks. Now, ultra suede has gotten really expensive. If you were to buy the uh, upholstery weight ultra suede just by the yard, you'd be spending $150 a yard, something like that. So we sell the little quarter yard bundles, which are as wide as ultra suede, which is not quite 60, but in the range of 56, 57 inches. This is $40 retail and we'll have a discount on them. We have, I don't know, six or seven colors of this that you can buy in the quarter yard pieces. We have these two zippers that you can buy separately. These are the zippers that we've used in various kits. This is the zipper that we used in the village bag kit. And I don't think this one we've used in a kit, but boy, you could sure order it and use it inside. I just like, I don't know, there's something about having a really nice zipper, either on the outside or the inside of a bag. It just adds a little something to it. If you are really thinking about, still thinking about holiday gifts, as I am, I haven't even gotten into the holiday Christmas giving spirit yet, but I'm, as of today, I am. All right, yeah, December 1st. I think, that I'm, I think it's about time for me to do that. So I have some things to share with you uh, that you can consider purchasing for yourself, telling someone to order it for you, or order it for somebody else. Every year we try to uh, assemble some beautiful scissors. So we have these lovely Studio Carta scissors that are made in Italy. They're fabulous scissors. So we have the shears, 8-inch shears, the 5-inch scissors, and the, I'm not sure what these are, 3.5 inches, I think. 3.5. So I love the red handles. It's a great time to buy anything with red handles. So we have assembled these as a combination gift pack, boxed, ready to go, and this is one product, a, a grouping of three scissors. Um, I don't know. I, I, have a, I guess I like scissors. I have every scissor that was ever invented. I, I have a book from years ago on sewing pillows, and one of the things we took a picture of was all my scissors that at that time were hung up on a grid in my sewing room, and it was lots of scissors. So I don't know. I just like scissors. Now... I know I sound like a broken record sometimes. I talk about isocord thread a lot. And isocord thread is what I use in my serger for my three thread finishing. Lots of people have been asking where to get isocord thread. So we decided to assemble a packet of four colors of basic isocord thread. We have white, oat color, gray, and black three spools. And the reason is, I know that some people use four, but I use three of the same color. So you obviously would use one spool in the needle, the single needle, and two spools for the loopers. And this thread is beautiful. It is like putting silk in your overlock machine. And why I like that is when you press a seam after you've surged the edge, then you don't have the show through because it's very fine, it's very silky, very smooth, not a lot of lint. You, once you surge with isocord thread, you'll never go back to whatever is available on the big cones that's cheap on the counters. So gift pack of isocord thread, four great colors. Two other scissor ideas. We have the little tiny, tiny little embroidery scissors. Are these not the cutest things? This is what I use when I'm sitting by the television at night watching the next series of something. 
and this is what I use for my handwork and embroidery work. It comes in this beautiful little gift box. So think about giving that to someone or yourself. I'm a, I'm a great person for buying for myself. And the other scissors that are new to us this year are the rooster scissors. Now, <laughs> you know we've been talking a lot about chickens and roosters, and we can't keep any of that fabric in stock with chickens and roosters. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's a very popular motif. So these are, again, Studio Carta scissors in gold with the rooster motif. So cute. And then we have all, not all, but most of our books on sale. The sewing workshop book does have bag patterns and scarf patterns in it. Ten bag patterns, including a backpack, which I also pointed out to, to Deb. Um, this is the, the pattern for the backpack, which is very cute. And it has patterns for seven scarves. So all of these things in here could be great gifts. Of course, the book could be as well. Particularly for someone who's learning to sew, a more beginning sewer, there's nothing in here that's hard to make. But all the projects are appealing to lots of different generations. I have two Sew Easy series books. The one called Sew Easy has 12 projects in it. Again, very much like the Sewing Workshop book, but this time each, I should have gotten one that had been opened, but um, it has a little booklet in it. This would be great for a beginning sewer with all kinds of how to sew, very basic knowledge about just sewing in general. And then the projects are on individual cards. So once these come out of the plastic sleeve, then you have individual product projects on each card, really beautifully illustrated. And that comes in this boxed set like this, which is cute in itself. So, so easy. Have the same sort of thing for scarves. I think there are, let's see, one, two, three, yes, 12 projects in here, again with the booklet. And the booklet relates to all of the techniques that have anything to do with the projects that are in the book. So beginning sewing and yet supplemented to what's particular to this, to the projects. So Sew Easy Scarves. I'm going to talk about this book a little bit more next week, but I, this is probably my most beautiful book ever called Scarves to Make. And all of the photography was done in New York, on the streets of New York, as a matter of fact. Jack Deutsch was the photographer, and he's the best in the business. And there are 30-some, 30 35 projects in here, not just my projects, but scarves that were contributed by various artisans and professionals across the country, and you will recognize a lot of them. So um, Diane Erickson, Marcy Tilton, um, different people have contributed to this book. Very different styles, but a beautiful, beautiful book. And then I have my So Sensational Pillows book that has over 50 pillow projects in it, all about making beautiful pillows. One of the new items that we have as a gift is a gift card that you can now purchase online. We've never had that ability before. <clears throat> so this is a, um, a, an online only gift card. Erin can probably explain it better than I can. Oh, she needs to turn on her mic. I wasn't expecting that <laughs> Sorry about that, Erin. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, you can get them in different increments, um, 50, 100, uh, I believe 150, 200, um, and you receive an email with a code that you would enter at checkout, and so you could email that email to um, the gift recipient, um, or if, you know, if it's for yourself, you know, no judgment there. So that's how it works. <laughs> okay. Great, so that's new this year. All right, so the village bag pattern 
this pattern. If you order, when you order anything this week, a kit, a book, scissors, fabric, whatever order for any amount of money that you send in, we're going to give you a free village bag pattern, which is a printed pattern. Now, if you order a village bag kit, you're going to get the pattern in there as well. So you're going to get two patterns. So give one away. Give it as a gift to a granddaughter, a daughter or a son, a friend, whoever. That would be the only time you would get two. Otherwise, you're going to get a free village bag pattern with every order. All right, Erin, have I said it all? I think so. What Other than, uh, all right, do we have any questions? Do. We had a uh, detailed question about the ice accord. Is it a 40 tex? I'm it is. Guessing. Okay. The weight. The, the weight of the or ice accord is 40. Okay. It's the standard embroidery weight thread. Do you have duckbill scissors for embroidery? We do. We have duckbill scissors for embroidery. Okay. Um, what top pattern are you wearing? Oh, yes. I always forget to tell you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Picasso top in a sweater knit, and I'm wearing the Picasso pants in black ponte knit. Okay. Um, and can you repeat what the, um, this coat is? The oh, the coat, oh, this coat, Samantha's, Samantha's coat, coat, is the Now shirt. That is one of the two patterns in the Now and Zen pattern. She's lengthened it and left raw edges, seams on the outside, and full collar rather than turned and sewn, and added pockets. And added that seam. Yeah, the... this seam has been added. Mm -hmm. She's used uh, buttons. And that's a so confident, too. I don't this remember. is a so confident. We would have to look up the year, maybe a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. but yeah, the how to do this, how to break up this pattern, how to develop this pattern is in a so confident. We're going to say 2017, but we're not sure. We do have an index of So Confident on our website, so it should be easy to find. It's the Now jacket. Um, can the plastic canvas be used in the boulder and removable? Can the plastic canvas be used in the boulder and removable? Absolutely. No reason why not. What you're going to get in the kit is the Peltex, but this plastic canvas would be fine as well. Um, could you highlight the hardware um, and specify the sizes? The um, hardware, all right, let's see here. There are a couple of pieces of hardware that I forgot to tell you about as well. All right, so we have two inch wide buckles that are either polished chrome or antique brass. Then we have one inch hardware, the rings in the antique brass or the polished chrome, and the buckle, the slide buckle in the polished chrome or antique brass. We also have, which I failed to tell you, are these really cool buckles. This one looks like a little duck. Now I like to use this one. I'll take a, uh, a piece of ultra suede or fabric, maybe a half an inch wide, and I'll make a long strip and I'll attach this to the end of it and sew it into an edge so that this is what holds my car keys which, by the way, I lost yesterday and still haven't found. So I've been thumbing it to and from. No, not really. But Okay. Um, uh, one more. I have one more okay. buckle to show, too. That's one buckle, and then this is another one that I love. These are beautiful buckles uh, made from a bag company in Italy. Gorgeous buckles. So we sell these separately. 
Okay, would it uh, be difficult to add open pockets on the inside of a bag for a phone, glasses, case, bottle of water, etc.? Not at all. There are various pocket sizes throughout all of these, but you don't have to have zipper pocket openings on any of the bags. You can have them uh, completely, completely open. And what I do is sometimes, let's see which one I've done it on. Um, So, for instance, this one. This one has a, an open pocket. In fact, it's a double pocket. Let's see, get situated here. Okay, so this is a double pocket. It has one opening that's big and then under it it has two pockets. One for a phone and one for something else. Why don't you lift it up a little higher and show it? There yeah. Go. Okay, one outer pocket and then two inner pockets and then another pocket on the other side. Sometimes I'll even make the pockets that have a little gusset on the side so they have a little more dimension to them. But yeah, I like more pockets, the merrier. Okay. You want to um, catch that guy? No, never mind. Okay. Um, oh, can you, um, so we don't have specific kits for um, like the like downtown and daily news. Can you explain though that we have these other fabrics? Yes. On sale? So we have this blue laser cut and velour fabric for the Daily News. And we do have this webbing and this hardware. But it's not a kit. It's just not a kit. Separate. Mm -hmm. We have this cotton matelassé for the downtown bag. And we have this webbing and this hardware. So that'd make a great downtown bag. We have the laminated linen. I had used it for the village bag, but of course any of these fabrics can be made for any of the bags. And then the Pendleton. Sorry about that. <laughs> for the L squared. So the kits are these three. Village, Provence Market Bag, and Boulder Bag. Those are the three kits that we have. And then we have other fabrics for the other three patterns, which is Daily News, Downtown, and L Squared. Okay, uh, would the L Squared bag so well in soft leather? Ooh, yes. Would the Downtown Bag, or the L are you still mic'd? Yes. Okay. Um, any of these bags would be great in soft leather. Beautiful. Yeah. But the, but the uh, all-squared bag would be great in, be in uh, leather. Okay. Um, can you, are the bags washable? Are the bags washable? If the fabric's washable, the bags are washable. I would think so. And what about the things that you might insert, like the, um, the plastic and the pelt? Oh. Well, I know the plastic canvas is washable. I don't know about Peltex, actually. I've never washed one. Does, I don't know. Does anyone know the answer to that out there? Okay. Yeah, but for sure the plastic canvas would be washable. And all the hardware is washable, the ultra spades washable, uh, the webbings washable. Yeah. Could you use the buckles on the Soho coat? Uh, yes. Can we use? Yes. The answer is these buckles on the Soho coat? Absolutely. You'd have to create your own. Well, there are tabs uh, included in the Soho pattern, but you'd have to probably adjust the size of them to fit the ends of these buckles. But yes. Mm -hmm. We do have buckles that do fit the Soho coat pattern exactly. And I didn't talk about them today, but they are on special. 
and we had them in three finishes, copper, silver, and gold, I think. So they're on the website in the category of the video products, and you'll see those. Those are specifically ordered for the Soho coat, but these other two buckles would work as well. Okay. Um, will the zippers that you talked about be on sale? No, the zippers are not on sale. Okay. Oh, um, someone said that the Peltex is washable. The Peltex is washable. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, they asked about the fabric of your sweater, of your helix. The fabric of my sweater is uh, something that we had last season that is a uh, poly and something. Um, rayon and poly, I believe it was, but it's just a textured sweater knit. I've made the Picasso top in cotton knits, uh, viscose knits, sweater knits. Um, I have not made it in a woven, although I know people who have. Uh, but I've only made it in some variety of a knit. Actually, some of these new bulky sweater knits that I just showed at the beginning would be pretty cool in the Picasso. Okay, oh, how do you like your new serger? <laughs> how do I like my new serger? <laughs> well, the box is sitting in my sewing room at home, and I am, <laughs> I bought it from a dealer in Arkansas, and I'm going to Arkansas to be trained on it soon. So I love it, <laughs> but I haven't used it yet. The box is delightful. <laughs> the box is wonderful. I, do, I did take the manual out and briefly look through that. But I'm pretty excited about it. So I tell you what, that does change. I don't have any uh, other ability to cover stitch anymore. You know, I used to have those other five machines and they're gone. So I, if I have to cover stitch something, I can't. So I have got to get that going. But looking forward to it. Okay. Um. The dealership in, in Arkansas is so in heaven, and there are a lot of great Bernini dealers in, in the United States, but um, she is the closest, one of the closest ones to me, and uh, so she's fabulous. And, oh, oh um, can the um, studio carta scissors work if you're left-handed? Uh, they're not left, uh, well, the, um, the shears would not be right-handed, the other two would be. Now, right now, we're selling those as a package of three. Uh, depending on the sales that we have through the holidays, you will be able to buy those individually. But I would think... I think these are right-handed scissors. Where do you get the plastic canvas? You can buy the plastic canvases at Joanne Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, those kinds of places, or online probably. I bought this particular piece at Joanne Fabrics. Okay, that's all I see. That's Wanna all go? there is? All right, got to hear the specials. Okay, I'll take that. Okay. So, lots of things on sale. The Isacord gift pack, 20%. The scissor package, 20%. That is a good deal. <laughs> um, those are kind of hard to come by, and they're coming out of Italy, and what we have is what we have. Um, all of the bag kits, these three bag kits are 20% off. The rooster scissors are 20%, but the little petite ones are only 10%. The little red petite ones. The bag patterns, the Boulder, the Village, the Downtown, and the Daily News are $12, and the Provence is $15. That's interesting. The Provence is normally more expensive. Okay. All right. Uh, all the books are 20% off. The Ultra Suede 
bundles of quarter yard, well, yes, when you order ultra suede, you order, you're ordering it by the quarter yard, so remember that. That's 20% off. Buckles, the magnets, webbings, 20% off. All fabrics that I showed are 20% off. And there we go. And don't forget about those gift cards. All right. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week.